Hi there. So this week was really fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Stefan is, I don't know, he's just such an incredible creative mind. He's so um, generous, I think, with his, his sharing of information about what it is to, li to be a creative person. Um, he's incredibly hardworking and productive. So I find just, you know, even thinking about Stefan to be an inspiring experience. So I wanted to tell you, um, you know, I've known Stefan, I think, probably 10 years ago, I, I first encountered him when he was working on this book, 100 Days of Monsters. And um, this book is really fantastic. What he did is it's not only, not only is it um, about the actual monsters that he's made, which are beautiful, and uh, there are many of them, but also what he did is he went and got um, asked many different writers to write about what they think this, the story is behind these um, different monsters. And, and there are poems and there's uh, biographies and all kinds of stuff in this book. Um, in a typical Stefan way, it also has um, uh, charts at the back that explain what different jobs the monsters have. Um, it talks about where people watched it on his website. Uh, here's a list of all the different authors. There's um, all kinds of statistics. There's even a DVD here with videos of all of the time lapses that he made of the videos. So anyway, so when I first saw that book, I thought this guy is crazy. Um, you know, and fun, and I really like his work. So um, I've known him for a long time, and I was excited to get to work with him on this project. So his homework, I thought, was really interesting and challenging, and to me, I wanted to kind of respond by not just doing the one piece, but to do a whole bunch of them. And I decided to take the PDF that he had given us as the parting gift, because his ink blots are just beautiful. And um, I decided to take one of them and put it into my iPad. I've been working on my iPad a lot recently, as you may know. And uh, I decided that I would work in the iPad rather than working on paper. Um, so here's my iPad. It has a special little leather holster here for my uh, pencil. And um, it's a big, big one. It's, it's big. And uh, there's a drawing of the monkey. Um, based on a drawing by um, by another artist who I admire um, and who I will be talking about in the future, Felix Scheinberger. Anyway, so this, I use um, an application that is called uh, Procreate. It is by far, in my experience, the best way to work on the iPad. So if that's what you're interested in doing, I highly recommend it. But what I liked about working on the iPad in this particular case was I was able to take that, block, that ink blot that Stefan had made and I was able to copy and paste it and so I could use the same ink blot in different ways and be inspired by it in different ways. So let me take you through what I did. So here's the ink blot number 10 from uh, the PDF and it struck me that it looked kind of like a bird. A bird with its wings outstretched as if it was coming in for a landing. So I decided, okay, it's landing on a tree. I started to just draw a tree from my imagination, a kind of generic tree with lots of branches and some uh, kind of rough bark. Then I threw a bit of gray tone behind it. And, uh, you know, I wanted it again to feel rough. And now I started to draw the rest of the bird. And the bird has, you know, its uh, claws or talons outstretched as it comes in for a landing, and of course it needs a beak with a little bit of a tongue and one of the sort of crazy Stefan Booker eyeballs. Um, and now it started to look, I don't know, there was something sort of creepy about the whole thing, so I decided to put it in a, a cemetery. And I started to draw tombstones and various things like that along the bottom as if that's where it was. And of course, because it's a graveyard, it has to be at night. And so I started to add more color and more depth to make it feel sort of funereal. And the overall feeling was sort of like some creepy Edward Gorey or something like that drawing. So that was fun. Let's have another go. Let's make it red, see if that inspires something new. Um, some eyes. Looks kind of like a praying mantis. Maybe I'll give it a bit of a body. Nah, it looks too much like feathers. Let's try it again. Uh, uh, this sort of looks like a butler. Okay, butler, give him some... Edwardian clothes, but maybe a beetle body, sort of iridescent, maybe with a stinger, because he is a monster after all. And now some legs. Um, 
Okay, I'll give him a human leg, hairy, with a track shoe. Maybe a different leg, a, a, a sandal or something. A lady's leg, a, a businessman's leg. Praying mantis hands, they, they look like they're pushing something. Maybe, maybe it's a shopping cart. Yeah, and I don't like the red face anymore. Make it black and just give it a bit of color of background. Yeah, that's nice. Let's turn it around again. Looks like hair. Looks like hair, some kind of ridiculous hairstyle, sort of like dreadlock man bun. Who would have a hairstyle like that? Some kind of silly hipster dude. And of course he would have to have a beard to match because he's a hipster, so I'll give him that. He's sort of portly. Portly, yeah, wearing blue jeans and a plaid shirt. Maybe not blue jeans, maybe brown. Brown, kind of norm core. Where is he? He's in the city. He's in, like, you know, Brooklyn somewhere, so he's standing on the street corner. Uh, but why is it? Don't walk. Yeah. Standing there, he should be breaking the rules. He's like a cool, groovy dude. So, yeah, the sign says walk, but he's not walking. The ultimate rebellion. Thanks. Speaking of ridiculous hairstyles, let's just make it yellow. There you go. Give him an American flag. Hail to the chief. It's a little literal, but I gotta make it. Um, ink blot ruins your day. Oh, no. Gotta go home and change my shirt. I gotta try one more. See, if I make it white, it looks sort of like the snow on Mount Fuji. Can I do something that looks like a Japanese print? You know, with a, like another mountain reflecting in the water or the cliff in the foreground and a lone branch with a leaf and give it sort of like a frame like they did with those wood blocks. I gotta just give it texture. It's gotta feel deep, you know, old, like it's 100 years old and, and Japanese feeling and... Something like that. Romantic, mysterious, strange, ancient, muted, mysterious, and a full moon, of course, reflecting in the ocean. I hope you had fun making your monsters. I can't wait to see what you came up with and what you have to say about, you know, the ways that uh, Stefan has inspired and informed you. I look forward to seeing it in the galleries. <laughs> <laughs>